Well, it's actually been enormous. Much of Australia has been in either full or partial knockdown for quite a lot of the year since March. And currently there are currently very few COVID-19 cases, uh, less than about five a day on average. Um, so what's been happening is that most of the interstate borders have been closed over this period. As a result, there's very little domestic travel. Mm -hmm. um, now, domestic aviation is big in Australia with the Sydney, Melbourne, Air Route, normally one of the world's biggest. And to give you an idea of how bad the effect has been of COVID, uh, Melbourne, which has a population of 5 million people, um, its airport is operated at 1%, just 1% of 2019 capacity for traffic. So uh, domestic aviation is very small. Also, international aviation is almost zero. Now, there are some repatriation flights from Asia and Europe, just a few of them. And in the last two or three weeks, there has been some traffic from New Zealand. And this week, uh, the first um, flight from New Zealand flew into Melbourne. It's only the first one after about six months or more. Um, so there's, there's been very little international traffic. And as a result, you find that there aren't very many international students coming to Australia. And there's not likely to be much international traffic until the middle of next year. Now, what about the airlines? The airlines have really been suffering. The largest Qantas had been profitable until 2019, and it was or is well capitalized. Now, it's had fairly limited support from the government directly. However, it has received public funding to keep much of its workforce. And, but this funding is now being reduced gradually. Now, Qantas has been able to secure more debt and equity because it's basically, well, well uh, it's been a profitable airline. The second airport airline, uh, Virgin Australia, was forced to go into what's called administration or rather like chapter 11 in the US and it was sold, recapitalized, and now it survives again, and it's operating, but it is rather quite a lot smaller. So that's the second airline. Then the other airlines that are important are the regional airlines. Now they've actually received quite a lot of funding, com uh, comparatively speaking, um, but that's been ensure, to ensure that basic services to re regional and rural areas are still operated. And of course, the airports are badly affected. The larger airports are all public, privately owned, um, and they've had to take on more debt and equity. And the smaller local government airports have been helped from the local government and by their owners. Okay, so, Good, thank you. Um, well, first of all, there hasn't been much of a policy response in terms of aviation policy. However, the government is having a review. It's only just begun, so we don't know what it's going to be looking at in detail or what it will come up with. Uh, however, there are various policy questions which will impact on aviation. The big question is, what about borders? Both the border between Australia and other countries, and what about um, uh, the borders within Australia? Now, if in, things go to plan, 
there will be an opening up of borders by the end of the year. That is, na uh, uh, borders between the Australian states and territories. Now, that will greatly sim simulate aviation. So that would be a good thing. However, not all routes will be open by then, but it will be quite stimulated. Um, however, even now, there are outbreaks of COVID. And for example, in South Australia, which is a small state, uh, there's been a lockdown and also the borders between uh, the other states um, have been going up again. So you can't be sure what's really going to be happening. But hopefully, say by the end of the year, um, most borders will be no longer there. Sorry, well, not blocked. The other question is uh, international aviation. And it's going to be rather sl slower for international aviation to be uh, opened up. So what will probably happen is that it'll be country by country. And so already um, it's possible uh, for people from New Zealand to come to Australia to go to certain states, but not all of them. So that will be the first, well, that, that, that's it. And it will be the countries which have lower, low COVID infection rates that are opened up first, to have a bubble, as they say. And so one of the countries that would be most likely to be um, uh, opened up to would be Korea, uh, but also Singapore, Japan, China, Taiwan. And so those would be the, the countries that would be first opened up. And that would be happening perhaps in the first half of next year. However, significant opening of the routes to Europe, well, the, the rest of Asia, Europe and North America will be dependent on progress in, op in keeping infections low. And given what's going on both in Europe and North America, it doesn't look as if it's going to be very um, soon that uh, things will be opening up. So it probably won't be the case that there'll be substantial opening up to um, European travel, North American travel, until towards the end of this next year. And that's assuming that the various outbreaks that are present at the moment get resolved. Um, and of course, it will be dependent on vaccine availability. And of course, as we know, that's beginning to happen. Um, so what's happening then is that the airlines will be losing more money They'll probably survive, or most of them, the large ones will, um, but it's going to be difficult for them. So governments in Australia, both the federal government controlling international borders and state governments with controlling interstate um, borders have been very risk averse in dealing with COVID-19. And so they've had substantial lock lockdowns much harder than in most countries. As a result, there's been less of an outbreak, but nonetheless, it's had an enormous effect on uh, both domestic and international aviation. It's also been very costly for the tourism industry, which is big in Australia, and also the education industry. Lots of students come from overseas to come to Australia. Um, so hopefully, by 2021, um, domestic travel will be close to recovery and international travel will gradually increase over the next year.